in a small bustling town in Nigeria lived a young and beautiful woman named Amaka. She had always been the talk of the town because of her striking looks and charm. However, bare night, Amaka had a dark secret that no one knew. Amaka's life had not been easy. Her family was poor and she struggled to make ends meet. She tried various jobs but none seemed to pay enough. Desperation led her down a dangerous path, one she never imagined she would take. One evening, as Amaka walked home from the market, she ran into an old friend in Kechi. They had not seen each other in years. Inkechi was dressed in expensive clothes and looked very different from the girl Amaka used to know. Amaka, is that you? Inkechi called out, her voice filled with excitement. Amaka smiled, surprised to see her. Inkechi long time, no see. How have you been? I have been doing well. How about you? You look like you are still struggling. Inkechi said, glancing at Amaka's one address. Amaka cited, it's been tough. I have been trying to find a good job, but nothing seems to work out. Inkechi's eyes glammed. I might have a solution for you, but it's not for the faint-hearted. It pays very well. Amaka was intrigued. What is it? Inkechi hesitated, then leaned in closer. You could make a lot of money by sleeping with dogs for rich people. It's disgusting, I know, but the pay is unbelievable. Amaka was shocked. Sleep with dogs? That is insane. I know, but think about it. Just a few nights and you could earn more than you ever imagined. Inkechi said, lowering her voice, I have done it a few times. It is not easy, but it is a way out of poverty. Amaka was conflicted. The idea was revolting, but she desperately needed money. She thought about her family, the debts they had and the dreams she has to give them a better life. All right, Amaka said finally. I will try it just once. Inkechi nodded, I will introduce you to my contacts. He will set everything up. A week later, Amaka met with Inkechi's contacts, a man named Chief Uchi. He was a wealthy an influential figure in town. Chief Uche explained the agreement. She would meet a client dogs, fulfill the agreement and receive a large sum of money. This is your chance to change your life, Amaka. Chief Uche said, handing her an envelope filled with cash. Just one night and you will be paid well. That night, Amaka found herself in a luxurious mansion, feeling sick to her stomach. She could not believe what she was about to do. A large dog was brought into the room and Amaka closed her eyes, trying to block out the reality of what was happening. The experience was as horrifying as she had feared, but when it was over, she received a hefty payment. As she walked out of the mansion, she clutched the money tightly, tears streamed down her face. She hated herself for what she had done, but could not deny the relief of having so much money in her hands. This turned into weeks, and Amaka continued to receive more offers. Each time, she told herself it would be the last. But the money was addictive. Her family's financial problems were disappearing and she could finally afford the things she had always wanted. However, the shame and guilt 
never left her. She started avoiding her friends and family, afraid they would find out a secret. She feared judgment and rejection. One day, as she was leaving another mansion, Amaka bumped into Chike, a young man she had known since childhood. Chike was a journalist, always digging into latest story and scandals. He noticed her nervous demeanor and the expensive handbag she was carrying. Amaka, you look different. What is going on? Chike asked. His eyes filled with concern. Nothing, Chike. I am just busy with some work, Amaka said, trying to sound casual. Chike did not believe her. Are you sure? You seem troubled. If there is anything you need to talk about, you can trust me. Amaka forced a smile. Thanks, Chike, but I am fine, really. As she walked away, she felt a pang of fear. What if Chike started investigating her? What if her secret was exposed? The money had brought temporary relief, but the web of deceit and lies was tightening around her. Amaka knew she could not continue like this, but she did not know how to escape the trap she had fallen into. Days after bumping into Chike, Amaka tried to keep low profile. She continued to receive lucrative offers, but felt increasingly paranoid each night. She questioned if the nest would be at last in this dark world. One evening, Chief Uchi contacted her with a new job. This client is paying double, he said. It is an important figure, so make sure you are on your best behavior. Amaka agreed, despite the growing note of anxiety in her stomach. The next night, she found herself in another opulent mansion, this time in a secluded area outside the city. The client, a politician named Mr. Bassey, was notorious but powerful. He welcomed Amaka with a cold, calculating smile. Good evening, Amaka, Mr. Bassey said, his voice smooth yet unsettling. I have heard a lot about you. Amaka forced a polite smile. Thank you, sir. I hope I can meet your expectations. As the evening unfolded, Amaka went through the ordain once more. A thought raising. She feared what would happen if someone found out. But the money Mr. Bassey offered was too substantial to refuse. Afterward, he handed her an envelope filled with cash and a chilly warning. Keep your mouth shut about tonight, Mr. Bassey said, his eyes narrowing. If anyone finds out, you will not just lose the money, you will lose everything. Amaka nodded, her heart pounding. As she left the mansion, she wondered how much longer she could endure this life. The risk was escalating and the fear of exposure was constant. The next day, she was at home counting her money when Ikechi visited. Ikechi looked more nervous than usual glancing around as if someone might be watching. Amaka, you need to be careful, Inkechi whispered, her voice trembling. There are rumors that police are investigating a prostitution ring involving high-profile clients. Your name could come up. Amaka's blood ran cold. What do you mean? Are you saying I might get caught? Inkechi nodded, yes. Some people are talking about it. I heard Chike is looking into it. He is a good journalist. And if he digs deep enough, he might find out everything. Pani sucked through Amaka. Chike's determination and journalistic skills could expose her. She knew she had to act fast to protect herself. That evening, she received a call from Chike. Amaka, I need to talk to you. It's urgent. Amaka's hand trembled as she answered. Chike, what is going on? 
I have been investigating a prostitution ring involving some powerful people, Chike said. His tone serious. Your name came up. I am worried about you. Amaka had skipped a bit. Chike, please do not dig into this. It is dangerous for both of us. I can help you, Amaka, Chike insisted. Let's meet and talk. I will not judge you, but I need to understand what is happening. Amaka agreed reluctantly, knowing she had no choice. They met at a quiet calf, away from prying eyes. Chike's concern was evident as he looked at her. Amaka, I know you are in trouble, Chike said gently, but I need to know the truth. What is really going on? Tears were up in Amaka's eyes as she confessed everything. The desperation, the deals with Chief Uche, the degrading encounters with dogs. Chike listened intently, his expression a mix of shock and sympathy. Amaka, this is serious, Chike said, his voice filled with determination. We need to get you out of this and expose those responsible, but we have to be careful. Amaka nodded, feeling a weight lift from her shoulders. What will I do, Chike? How can I get out of this? We will gather evidence against them, Chike said, but first you need to play low. Stop taking any more jobs. I will work on getting the proof. We need to take them down. For the first time, Amaka felt a glimmer of hope with Chike's help. She believed she could find a way out of this nightmare. However, the road ahead was fraught with dangers and they had no ideas how far the powerful figures in the network would go to protect their secrets. As Amaka and Chike prepared their plans, they knew they had to be conscious. The stakes were higher than ever, and any misstep could lead to devastating consequences. Yet, despite the risk, Amaka was determined to reclaim her life and seek justice for herself and the other victims. Despite Chike's warning, and the terrifying rumors swirling around. Amaka found herself slipping back into the dark world. She desperately wanted to escape. The money was too enticing and her debt seems to multiply. She tried to maintain a resolve, but a call from Chief Uchi scattered her fleeting determination. Amaka, Chief Uchi's voice was smooth but insistent. I have another client. This one is extremely worthy and he is willing to pay triple. Amaka hesitated. Chief, I do not know if I can keep doing this. Chief Uche turns hardened. You owe me, Amaka. Remember, I have people who can make your life very difficult if you refuse. Fear grip Amaka. She knew Chief Uche was not bluffing. Reluctantly, she agreed to the job, trying to convince herself it would be the last time. The next night, she arrived at a lavish estate on the outskirts of Abuja. The client, a foreign businessman named Mr. Kazin, greeted her with an unsettling code demeanor. Welcome, Amaka, Mr. Kazin said, his accent thick. I have heard you are quite good at what you do. Amaka forced a smile. I hope I can meet your expectations. The encounter was as degrading as she feared. Mr. Kazim had a large, vicious looking dog and the art was more brutal than anything she had experienced before. Every moment was a battle to maintain her composure and get through the ordeal. Afterward, Mr. Kazim handed her a stack of crisp foreign bills, more money than she had ever seen in one place. Keep your mouth shut about tonight or you will regret it, he warned. As she left the estate, her mind was a wide wind of fear and confusion. The money was life-changing, 
but the cost was too high. Her thought drifted to Chike and his promise to help her get out. She felt a pinch of guilt for not reaching out sooner. But the alone of quick cash had drawn her back into the abyss. The following day was a bloom of anxiety and paranoid. She avoided calls from Chief Uchi and tried to distance herself from the network. But just as she thought she could regain control of her life, she received another call, this time from a new number. Amaka it Adewale, I need to talk to you about something important. Adewale was a slick operator who managed high-profile clients. His involvement meant big money but also bigger risks. Amaka knew she would refuse but found herself agreeing to meet him. They met at a district hotel. Adewale was all smiling but his eyes were cold and calculating. Amaka, I have a job that could set you up for a life, but it is dangerous. Amaka had sank. I am not sure, Adewale. I am trying to get out of this. Adewale leaned forward. I understand, but this client is offering a fortune, enough to pay off all your debts and disappear if you want. The offer was too tempting. Despite her better judgment, Amaka agreed to meet the client, a reclusive tycoon named Mr. Gbadebo. The encounter was scheduled for the following week at a private villa by the beach. In the meantime, Amaka tried to stay under the radar. She considered contacting Chike again, but fear grabbing her deeper into a dangerous world. She knew he was determined to expose the network, but she could not risk her own safety or his. The night of the meeting arrived and Amaka found herself at the luxurious villa. Mr. Gbadebo was a middle-aged man with a steam expression and hair of authority. He led her to a secluded room where his dog, a large and aggressive breed, awaited. Amaka braced herself for the ordain, trying to detach her mind from the degrading act, Mr. Gbadebo watched with a detached curiosity, and the experience was as horrifying as any she had endured. When it was over, he handed her a swift case filled with money, enough to pay off all her debts. Remember, Amaka, Mr. Gbadebo said, with a chilling calmness. No one must ever know about tonight. As Amaka left the villa, she felt a mix of relief and revolution. The money was a way out, but the price she had paid was unbearable. She knew she could not continue living like this, but breaking free seemed more complicated than ever. Back at her apartment, Amaka counted the money and wondered if she could finally escape. Her phone puzzled with message from Chief Uchi demanding her presence for another job. The message was clear. Her debt were not just financial and escaping would not be easy. Desperate, Amaka died Chike's number. When he answered, she broke down, telling him everything. Chike, I cannot do this anymore. I need your help. We will figure something out. Amaka, Chike said, his voice firm, I will get you out of this, but you need to be careful. As they planned their next steps, Amaka knew she was at the crossroad. The danger was real, and the network was powerful, but she could not let her fear dictate her life anymore. With Chike's support, she hoped to find a way out before it was too late. After Senator Okoro arrest, life became increasingly dangerous for Amaka. The network was desperate to silence anyone who might expose them. The tension was high and the money she received from her dengredi encounters felt like blood money. One evening, Amaka was lying low in her tiny apartment, still shaking by the close calls and the constant fear. Her phone rang. 
displaying an unknown number. Hesitant but curious, she answered, Hello, is this Amaka? The voice was unfamiliar, but there was something urgent about it. Yes, who is this? Amaka replied, consciously. It's Temi. I am journalist investigating the trafficking network. I have heard about your involvement and I want to help you tell your story and get out. Amaka at risk. Exposing her story could bring the network down but also put her in immense danger. How do I know I can trust you? Temi's voice softened. I know you are scared but this could be your chance to escape. We can meet in public place and I can bring proof of who I am. After much deliberation, Amaka agreed to meet Temi at a busy calf. The journalist, a young woman with determined eyes, presented her credentials and reassured Amaka of her intentions. They talked for hours with Amaka, consciously revealing parts of her harrowing experience. You have a powerful story, Amaka, Temi said. With your testimony, we can expose more of these criminals and help others like you. Amaka felt a flicker of hope but also an overwhelming sense of fear. I will think about it, she said. Finally, knowing the risk we are monumental, the following day, Chief Uchi contacted her again. This time with a more dangerous preposition. Amaka, there is a client who is willing to pay a lot, but you need to leave the city for a few days. He is very influential. Amaka knew she could not refuse without risking her life. She agreed to meet the client, a wealthy politician named Mr. Adebola, in a remote estate. As she traveled there, she felt a sense of dread. She could not shake. Mr. Adebola was waiting for her in a grand isolated mansion. His demeanor was cold and demanding. He led her to a room where his dog and intimidating breed awaited. The encounter was more degrading and violent than any she had experienced before. Mr. Adebola watched without emotion, his gaze chilling her to the bone. Afterward, he handed her an envelope filled with cash more than she had ever received. Remember, Amaka, if you talk about this, you will not live to spend that money, he warned. Back in her apartment, Amaka felt raped. The money was substantial, but the psychological toll was unbearable. A thought turned to Temi's offer and Chike, and Chike's earlier attempts to help her. She knew she needed a way out, but the network gripped on her life seemed unbreakable. The day that follows were filled with fear and paranoid. Amaka barely left her apartment, jumping at every shadow and phone call. She considered contacting Temi again but feared retaliation from Chief Uchi and his associates. One evening, Amaka received another call from Chief Uchi, this time more ominous. Amaka, you have done well so far. There is another job and you cannot refuse this one. The client is very powerful and he expects your cooperation. Amaka's heart pounded. Chief, I cannot keep doing this. It's too dangerous. Chief Uche voice turned easy. You do not have a choice, Amaka. You know what will happen if you defy us. Terrified, Amaka agreed to meet the new client, a foreign diplomat with connections to the network. The encounter was set for a secluded villa on the outskirts of the city. As she arrived, she was met by the diplomat's aide, who led her into a dimly light room. The dog, a massive feared looking beast, groaned as she entered. The diplomat watched from a distance, his eyes cold and calculating. The ordain was brutal leaving Amaka physically and emotionally scattered. The diplomat handed her a large sum of money, warning her to remain silent. Back home, Amaka broke down, realizing the gravity of her situation. She could not continue living this way, but escaping seemed impossible.
She caught Chike, her voice trembling, as she explained her latest ordain. Chike, I cannot do this anymore. They are going to kill me if I try to leave. We will find a way out, Amaka. Chike assured her, but you need to be strong and careful. I will reach out to some contacts and see what we can do. Amaka hung up, feeling a flicker of hope. At despair, she knew the road ahead would be dangerous, but she could not let her fear control her life any longer. As she lay awake that night, she resolved to find a way to expose the network and free herself from its grip, no matter the cost. Amaka wake up to another sleepless night, haunted by the images of her last encounter. The fear and the degradation she experienced were eating away at her. She knew something has changed. The call she had with Chike still lingering in her mind, a faint glimmer of hope in an otherwise bleak experience. The money brought another call from Chief Uchi. This time, his tone was less threatening and more urgent. Amaka, the diplomat, was pleased with your service. There is another job, but it is a big one. You need to be on your best behavior. Amaka's stomach turned. Who is it this time? A foreign investor with deep pockets and dangerous connections. He is hosting a private gathering and you will be expected to entertain his guests. Amaka felt a wave of nausea, but agreed. Knowing refusal was not an option. She spent the next few days preparing herself mentally for the degrading task ahead. The night of the event, a black limousine picked her up from her apartment, driving her to a luxurious estate on the Askes of Lagos. The gathering was already in full swing. When she arrived, the investor, Mr. Adams, was a tall, imposing figure with a sharp gaze. He greeted her with a smile that did not reach his eyes and introduced her to his guests. A mist of international businessmen and local elites. As the evening progressed, Amaka was led to a private room where several dogs were groomed, but intimidating, awaiting her. The guests gathered around, watching with twisted anticipation. Amaka felt a shiver of revolution, but forced herself to perform, knowing her survival depend on it. The encounter was more humiliating than before. Leaving her feeling utterly broken, Mr. Adams handed her a large envelope of cash and whispered, You did well tonight. Consider this a down payment for future engagements. Amaka returned home with the money but could not shake the feelings of disgust and despair. She called Chike, her voice barely above a whisper as she recounted the night events. Chike, I cannot keep doing this. They are treating me like an animal. Chike's voice was filled with concern. We need to act now. Amaka, I have spoken to Temi and she is willing to help us expose these monsters. We just need solid evidence. Amaka agreed to meet Temi again, this time at a different location, to avoid suspicion. At their meeting, Temi outlined a plan to gather incriminating evidence against Mr. Adams and the network. We need recordings, photos, anything that ties them directly to their crimes. Temi explained, over the next few weeks, Amaka carefully documented her interactions with the network. She used a hiding camera to record her meeting with Chief Uche and Mr. Adams, capturing their conversations and transactions. Each encounter was riskier than the last, but Amaka's determination to escape a nightmare gave her strength. One night, during a particular lavish party hosted by Mr. Adams, Amaka managed to record a conversation between him and a high-ranking government official discussing their trafficking operations. The official, Senator Adekule, 
was boosting apart his immunity and the profits they made from exploiting desperate women. Amaka's heart raised as she captured every word, knowing this was the evidence they needed. As the party continued, she discreetly sent the recordings to Temi, who promised to use them to build a case. However, Amaka's activities did not go unnoticed. Chief Uche began to suspect something was amiss. He called Amaka the next day. His voice lays with suspicion. Amaka, you have been acting strange lately. Hope you are not planning anything foolish, are you? Amaka faked innocence. Of course not, Chief. I am just trying to do my job and stay safe. Chief Uche's silence was ominous. Good, because if I find out you are double-crossing us, you know what will happen. Fear greet Amaka. But she maintained her composure after the call. She immediately contacted Chike and Temi, urging them to accelerate their plans. We are running out of time. Chief Uche is onto me. Temi arranged for Amaka to meet with Inspector Olawale in a secure location to hand over the evidence. This is it, Amaka. With this, we can bring down the entire network. Temi assured her. The meeting was set for a secluded park in the early hours of the morning. Amaka arrived, clutching a bag containing the recordings and documents. As she handed them to Inspector Olawoli, relief washed over her. Please, you have to protect me. They will come after me if they find out. Inspector Olawoli nodded. We will do everything we can, Amaka but you need to go into hiding immediately. Just as they were about to leave, a car screams to a nearby. Amaka's heart sank as she recognized Chief Uche's men. Emerging from the vehicle, it's a trap, she shouted, grabbing the inspector's arm. They barely escaped, but Amaka knew her time was running out. She went into hiding with Chike's help moving from one safe house to another, always looking over her shoulder. The network was relentless, and Amaka realized that the only way to end this nightmare was to see the case true to its conclusion, no matter the cost. Amaka's life became a shadow game of survivor, always on the move. She lived in constant fear of being found by Chief Uche's men. Each day felt like a delicate balance between exposing the network and keeping herself alive. Her only comfort was the occasional call with GK, who assured her that Inspector Olawale was making progress. One evening, Amaka received a message from Temi, critical evidence needed for trial. One last job. The idea of another encounter made Amaka's skin crawl, but she knew this could be the final. Step towards bringing down the entire operation. She braced herself for what lay ahead. Later that night, Temi called with details. Amaka, we need you to get closer to Senator Adekunle. He is hosting a private event tomorrow night. And it is crucial we get direct evidence. Linking him to the trafficking network. Amaka's stomach churned. How do I get in? Mr. Adams will be there, and he is expecting you. Use the opportunity to gather as much information as possible. This could be our last chance, Temi replied. The next evening, a black car arrived to pick Amaka up. She wore a slick black dress that disguised a small recording device, a gift from Inspector Olawale to capture critical evidence. The driver handed her a blindfold protocol. He said courtly, Amaka reluctantly put it on, the car speeding away into the night. When they arrived, the blindfold was removed, revealing a grand estate with high walls and armed guards inside. The hair was thick with luxury and menace. Amaka spotted Mr. Anders and approached him, forcing a smile. Good evening, Mr. Adams. He greeted her. Amaka, just in time, 
Senator Adekunle is eager to meet you. Make sure you entertain him well. Amaka followed Mr. Adams to a secluded room where Senator Adekunle was waiting. He was a man of power and influence. His eyes cold and calculating. He wasted no time in making his demand clear. Let's get into business, he said, motioning to a door at the back of the room. Amaka's heart pounded as she entered the dimly light room. The sight of a several large dogs make her stomach turn. She stilled herself, knowing what she had to do. The recording device hidden in her dress, capturing every degrading moment, every vile command from the senator. As she endured the encounter, she silently vowed this would be the last time. The humiliation and horror were almost too much to bear, but Amaka clung to the hope that her suffering would finally bring justice. Afterward, Senator Adekule handed her an envelope, stuffed with cash. You have done well. We will call you again soon. Amaka forced a nod and quickly left the room. She slipped into a beating room and sent the recorded files to Temi. Her hands shaking. It is done, she tested. Temi replied instantly. Get out of there now. Amaka made her way through the crowded hall, avoiding high contact as she reached the exit. She saw Mr. Anders talking animatedly with Chief Uche. A cold sweat dropped out on her forehead as she realized they were looking for her. Amaka, there you are, Mr. Adas called out, his eyes narrowing. Chief Uchi wants a word with you. Panic gripped Amaka. She turned and bolted, shoving her way through the crowd. Shout followed her and she heard footsteps gaining behind her. Desperation fueled her escapes as she burst through a side door into the night. She ran down a dark alley, her heart pounding until she saw a familiar car waiting at the end. Chike was behind the wheel. Get in, he yawned. Amaka dived into the car and they sped off. What happened? Chike demanded. They know, Amaka gasped. Tears streaming down her face. We need to hide now. Chike drove through the night, taking back roads and making sudden turns to lose any potential followers. They finally stopped at an old abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. Inside, Amaka collapsed on the floor, exhausted and terrified. They are onto us, Chike. They will not stop or till they find me. Chike knelt beside her, holding her tightly. We will stay safe, Amaka. Inspector Olawale had evidence now. It is only a matter of time before they are all behind bars. The next morning, Amaka awake to the sound of her phone, boozing. It was a message from Temi. The recordings are damning. The trial is moving forward. Stay hiding. Help is on the way. Relief mingled with fear as Amaka realized the end game was approaching. She has risked everything to gather the evidence. And now the justice she sought was within reach. But the shadow of Chief Uche and his associates loomed large. And Amaka knew the battle was far from over. Thanks guys for watching this video. Please watch out for the next episode. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel to support us, like, share and drop your comment below. And do not forget to tell us the country or the city you are watching from. Thank you guys. We love you all.